My name is Ranjani and I write a vegetarian food blog and today I'm making a very popular Indian chickpea curry or garbanzo bean curry called chole or chana masala. And here's what you're going to need. You're going to need one cup of garbanzo beans. These have actually been dried garbanzo beans that have gone ahead and soaked overnight. And I'm going to go ahead and transfer this into a pressure cooker. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a couple of tea bags. This is black tea, I'm just gonna go ahead and add that into this. Now, if you don't wanna add the tea bags to this, you don't have to, I like doing it because I feel like it retains the authenticity of the dish. But um, if you're lazy and you don't even want to go ahead and soak your garbanzo beans, you just need to get a couple cans and then you're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the lid on the pressure cooker, just like so. And let's go ahead right here and cook this. And you want to cook it until it's completely boiled through and soft on the inside. This is going to take up to about 20 minutes. It's going to whistle once and I'm going to turn the heat off and then we're going to be ready to go. Okay, so while my garbanzo beans are cooking, boiling all the way through, I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of prep work for the curry that we need to make. So I'm going to go ahead and chop up two small onions or you could use one large onion. It's entirely up to you. And you want to chop it fairly fine. Okay, so I've gone ahead and chopped up my red onion right here, and now I'm going to go ahead and chop up two smallish Roma tomatoes. You want to chop them fairly fine, and if you don't feel like chopping them, you can always um, just puree them, maybe once through the food processor. Okay, so I've gone ahead and chopped up my tomatoes and made a really quick ginger garlic paste with one clove of garlic and about an inch of ginger that I've shredded up. You can go ahead and buy this at the regular Indian grocery store, but I like to make mine because it's fresh. Okay, the last thing that we're going to need to chop up for our chickpea curry is a couple of skinny green chilies. You could also use the Thai serrano chilies if you like. These are really hot, so if you're not a big uh, fan of heat and um, hot food, um, I'd go ahead and eliminate this. Just slip them down the middle just like this, and let's just talk about some of the spices that are going to go into this garbanzo bean curry. Um, we've got some cumin seeds. These are just whole cumin seeds that we're going to use. And then this one's a little bit more exotic. It's amchur or dried mango powder. It's very tart, so we're going to use about two teaspoons of that in our chickpea curry. And then we're going to use about a teaspoon of red chili powder. You could use cayenne pepper if you like. I also have some ground coriander powder, about two teaspoons and then some ground cumin powder, about two teaspoons. And then I have some anar dana. Now this is another one of those exotic ingredients. This is actually um, the seeds of pomegranate. It's wild. And it's also very tart and gives it a nice sour taste. I'm gonna use about, maybe about two teaspoons of this. And mix this all up really well. So we make our own little spice blend. And so once our spice blend's done, we're also going to go ahead and use a little bit of garam masala. Now this is a five spice blend. It's easily available in most grocery stores nowadays. Um, we're just going to use that towards the end of our cooking process. Okay, so my chickpeas have finished boiling and what I've done is gone ahead and put them in a separate bowl. And then I also have a little bit of the cooking liquid that I've retained. I'm going to add it later on if I want to thin out the gravy a little bit. Now, if you were making this curry to eat with a flatbread, such as roti or paranta, you could make it fairly thick. But if you wanted to eat it with rice, you would make it a little bit more soupy and have a little bit more gravy to it. Now, if you're watching your carbs and you don't want to eat it with the bread or the rice, um, a good way to eat it would be to have it with some quinoa, maybe mildly spiced with a little bit of cumin. That would be a pretty good way to get both forms of protein in. All right, so let's get started. I have a pan that's heating up at about medium high, and I'm gonna put a little bit of oil. And now I'm gonna go ahead and put some cumin seeds in it, and just give it a few minutes until it pops a bit. Okay, so the cumin's popped a little bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and add the split skinny green chilies that I had sliced through earlier. And I'm also going to go ahead and add in the diced red onions. And you want to cook the red onions until they're fairly brown. Okay, so my onions have been browning for the past few minutes. 
And now I'm going to go ahead and add the ginger and garlic paste that I made earlier. And you want to cook it just for about maybe 40 seconds or so. You don't want to burn the garlic. And as soon as this cooks up, I'm going to go ahead and add the tomatoes. Okay, so my ginger garlic paste is cooked for about 40 seconds, and I'm going to go ahead and add the tomatoes in. And you want to cook the tomatoes until they kind of get pulpy and a little bit mushy. I'm also going to put some salt at this point to it. And add the spice blend that I've made earlier. Mix it all up really well. Add it in here. And you want to cook the tomatoes down until it starts to leave oil around the sides of the pan. And that's when you know that your spices, your masala is fully cooked also. Okay, so my masala paste is pretty much ready. And as I was mentioning earlier, you can actually see some of the oil in this starting to separate. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my cooked garbanzo beans to this. And you want it just to cook down for about five, six minutes or so, so that all the flavors absorb and they all come together very nicely. Okay, so my chole has been cooking for about 15 minutes now. I did add a little bit more of the cooking liquid because it was drying out and I was gonna eat it with a little bit of rice today. So um, I think most of the flavors have been absorbed at this point. I'm just gonna add a little bit of chopped cilantro. Just mix that in really well. And then finally finish it off with a little bit of the garam masala. And there we go. Just cook it for an additional minute or two and it's ready to serve. Okay, so I've gone ahead and served up some of the chickpea curry with a little bit of rice that I've made earlier. Now today I'm eating it with rice, but you can always eat it with any Indian flatbread like I've mentioned earlier or do the quinoa thing if you're looking at your carbs. Um, I just want to take a quick bite just to make sure it tastes good. Yeah, the garbanzo beans are perfectly cooked, well spiced. Serve it up with a nice glass of full-bodied robust red wine. Mm. That's a good dinner right there. For more quick and easy recipe ideas just like this one, be sure to visit my blog at wakeupandsmelldemasala.blogspot.com. I'll see you next time with another video.